Hey, welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to do something just a little bit differently. We've got a TTM return. It's already been opened. Coming out of Phoenix, Arizona. Eight days, $5 per card fee. Be waiting for this one. Give you a little baseball history with this one. It is Mr. Joe Youngblood on the 77 Tops rookie card. And this beautiful... 83 Fleer, Superstar Special, two teams, same day, Joe Youngblood, 8482, Mets and Expos. What's that all about? Well, most of you guys already know that Joe Youngblood played for two teams on the same day, got hits in both the games. He is a 70-year-old, uh, played several positions, I guess, here in the 77 tops. He's an outfielder. Actually, uh, his games played that year, he was a catcher, backup catcher for the Reds. Got a World Series ring that year. Big Red Machine won the World Series. He did not make an appearance in the playoffs for the World Series, but he got a ring. And then the following year, he was traded to the Cardinals early 1977. And in midseason 1977, there was a huge trade. And the Reds were involved again this time. And the trade that sent made Reds fans very happy. It made Mets fans probably throw things at their TVs. But uh, the Mets traded Tom Terrific. Tom Seaver to the Reds for a whole boatload of players. Pat Zachary, Doug Flynn, Steve Henderson, Dan Norman. And they also sent Dave Kingman to the Padres for a guy named Bobby Valentine. And then the Mets had another trade that number two, but really who was paying attention because everybody was so enthralled with the Tom Seaver trade to the Reds. But Joe Youngblood was traded from the Cardinals to the Mets for Mike Phillips. And uh, as a side note, interestingly, to make room on the roster, for Mr. Youngblood, there was a guy that announced his retirement from baseball that day. His name was Joe Torrey. So he retired as a player, became a coach, and then, of course, became a Hall of Fame manager. That's just an interesting side note. But on August 4th, 1982, Joe Youngblood made baseball history. The Mets were playing in Chicago. And, uh, of course, that was before Wrigley Field had lights, so all games were in Chicago were day games. And he played center field that day, got a single in the third inning, and he was on deck for his next at bat when he was called back to the dugout, told he was traded to the Expos. And he was also told that the Expos wanted him available for a game that night in Philadelphia. So he hopped on a plane Flew to Philadelphia in 90 minutes and got to the stadium in the sixth inning. Put on his uniform, was called upon to pinch hit, and got a single for the Expos. And that's detailed on the back of this card. Two teams traded to the Mets, wrapped a base hit for the Mets versus the Cubs in a day game, and another for the Expos that night. And another side note, I guess, is that he got the two hits off two future Hall of Famers. In Chicago, for the Mets, he got the hit off Ferguson Jenkins. And then in Philly, for the Expos, he got a hit off Steve Carlton. And I'm going to go on record right now and say this record will never be broken. <laughs> it could be tied, I guess, but um, I suppose. But look, baseball's been played for 150 plus years, and Youngblood is the only player to do it. And I realized, you know, it wasn't going to happen very often, if ever, prior to commercial airplane travel. So legitimately, you could say, you know, the last 70 or 80 years when flights were available. But even then, it only happened one time. But in a little slice of baseball history, I'm going to tell you the Paul Harvey. And now you know the rest of the story. In the history of baseball, only three players have played for two teams, two different teams in the same day. Obviously, Youngblood, we know him. 
But you may not have heard about May 30th, 1922, 60 years before Youngblood did it. Uh, the Cardinals were playing the Cubs in Wrigley Field, same field that he <laughs> got the hit off Ferguson Jenkins, and it was a doubleheader. In between games of the doubleheader, the Cubs traded Max Flack to the Cardinals for the Cubs' Cliff Heathcote. Don't have any cards of those guys to show, or I probably would. And the players changed dugouts for Game 2. Both of those guys got hits in Game 2. Both started for their former team in Game 1, but both went hitless in Game 1, so it could have happened back in 1922. But Flack went 0 for 4 for the Cubbies, 1 for 4 in Game 2. And Heathcote went 0 for 3 for the Cardinals, and 2 for 4 in Game 2. So, Youngblood has two records. One, he's the only major league player to play for two teams in two different cities in the same day. And obviously he's the only player to get hits for two different teams in the same day. So Max Flack and Cliff Heathcote, you had your chance, gentlemen. Blew it. Since his retirement, uh, Joe Youngblood has been a coach, yeah, mostly for the Diamondbacks most recently third base coach for them a few years ago. And then now I think he's the outfield and uh, base running coordinator, still working in the Diamondback system, I believe. But that's it. Eight days, $5 a piece for a record holder whose record will never be broken. It may be tied, but it's even doubtful that it will ever be tied, but it will not be broken. So thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up and let me know down below if you have a Joel Youngblood autograph. Um, let me know. Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up and we'll see you soon.